So, so you know, I, I do say that to um, emphasize that 20 minutes is uh, not a lot of time. So uh, once you start, uh, my I have twofold recommendation. One, um, uh, really be efficient with your time and focus on putting something into the answer box because uh, what you put into the answer box within the 20 minute time limit, that's treated differently from everything else. And... After the time limit runs out, you can um, continue to change your work. So in terms of attaching your work, you have all the time in the world. Now, you're still not allowed to get any outside help. So if your attached work shows signs of outside help, that is forbidden. But other than that, um, you know, take your time to organize. If you see mistakes that you made during the 20 minutes, hey, fix it and then attach the work. And I'll take all of that into account when I grade. Um, which um, <laughs> I actually have to get caught up. So, okay, with that, uh, let me get started. So, um, so I'm gonna start, I will see what question I got. And I know I got a question that I haven't done in the past. So I'll get uh, started with that. Again, trying to be efficient with the 20 minute time limit. Because even, even with my unfair advantage of having written the questions, it is really tight amount of time. Okay, start. Oh, yeah, so this is, I think, ballistic pendulum number two, because it's the remaining ballistic pendulum question that I haven't done. <laughs> so a bullet uh, collides with a block of mass, which is hanging from a, by a massless rod. Okay, the rod part is probably significant. With the collision, bullet becomes embedded in the block. Okay, uh, keep an organized record of your work. So let me do this. I think I'm going to copy and paste this into OneNote so that I can kind of annotate it and draw stuff around it. I think that's going to be useful. Um, so, okay, uh, what minimum speed does the bullet need to have so that it becomes, uh, so that when the block begins to swing, it'll make a full turn above the pivot point. Ah, interesting, okay. So let me do this. I'm going to kind of scale it because I'm beginning to see I need to be able to draw something that's much bigger than this. So this is a, so whenever you are um, doing problems, especially involving conservation of energy and momentum, it's really important to form a correct mental images of processes. So you have the thing that's getting embedded in here. And after that, it's going to start moving with some speed. Let me call it for you one. As it does, I'm imagining that in my head, okay, it's gonna begin to swing. And as it begins to swing, uh, so it'll go like a trace out a circle. The rod will kind of make sure the thing is uh, remaining at the same distance from the pivot. And I guess if it's gonna make a full turn, it'll have to go above. And I guess I'm, so as I'm imagining this rod and the block on the rod, making it above the top, I think I'm beginning to see what the barrier will be to making a full turn. Because in my head, as the block makes the turn, once it reaches the top and then tips over, then it's going to make a full turn. Like after that, there's no barrier. So uh, some sort of V... Uh, uh, I already used the V mean. Uh, let me call it V final. So it's going to have some sort of V final at the top here. And I think uh, as I imagine this process, I'm making this as smaller and smaller and smaller. So it's going to be slower and slower, slower. I can imagine this speed approaching zero. It just has to have enough, just a little bit of speed at the top to just, uh, just to, at, the, at, the, at the top, just to tip over. So this final speed can barely approach zero. And, um, and after that, it'll make a full turn. So with that image in mind, I think I have enough information to set up the rest of part A. So let me do that. Can I make this even smaller? Um, yeah, let me do that. So I, I have this uh, uh, as my uh, mental image. So with that in mind, for part A, I'm saying, all right, so I got to think in terms of snapshots. So I have, uh, let me call this my snapshot um, let me call this my snapshot zero. <laughs> um, and then after the collision, post the collision here, I'm going to call this my snapshot one. And then I think uh, nothing happens here. So I think I can call 
this position here, my snapshot um, 2. So from snapshot 0 to 1, having looked at collision processes like this many times, I have an intuitive feel that this, uh, this will conserve momentum. Mainly because there's no, there's zero net external force. So there's nothing that can change the momentum of the system, only internal forces. And I think it's going to not conserve energy. The main thing I'm looking at is this uh, looks like uh, what we call sticking collision. Or a more official name for sticking collision would be completely inelastic collision. So with these points in mind, I can use a conservation of momentum to see if I can set up enough equations to solve this. So let's do that. I'm going to say, okay, uh, net momentum in snapshot 0 is equal to net momentum in snapshot 1. In snapshot 0, I have mv min. I think that's it. Uh, the the, uh, the catcher isn't moving, block isn't moving, so no zero momentum there. I could say plus zero. That's equal to, after the collision, I have the combined thing, small m plus the block mass, and then it's going to move be moving at some speed of v1. All right, so in this equation, I think I have only one unknown, so I'm pretty sure I can just solve for that when, whenever I need to, so I'm good. I don't need to go looking for any additional equations. So let me just call this my equation A. Oh, that's going to be so confusing. Uh, let me call this my equation uh, Roman numeral 1. <laughs> and then, um, now this doesn't quite give me enough to solve for V min because, oh, right, right, right. Okay. Um, V1 is unknown, V min is unknown, two unknowns. So I need uh, enough information to figure out, okay, what is V1? So let's go hunting for additional information that will help me solve for V1. So that's where snapshot 1 to 2 will probably come in. So snapshot 1 to 2. For the process, I think I can right away say it's not going to conserve momentum. Because I see, especially in this part of the... Um, the swing, there's going to be net external force that'll change momentum. So it won't conserve momentum. Plus at the top, it, I think it's going to have zero momentum and it's starting out with a non-zero momentum. So obviously not conserved. But uh, because in this entire process, I don't see any um, non-conservative force doing work. So um, there's a, um, so um, there may be some like a tension force type thing happening with rod. But uh, because this displacement is in the perpendicular direction from the direction that rod can be exerting force, so I think those forces are going to be zero. The only force that's doing work is gravity, so it'll conserve mechanical energy. So with this in mind, I can use this to set up my conservation of energy equation, So which would be... Uh, the total energy in snapshot 1 is equal to total energy in snapshot 2. So uh, let's think through this. Um, so in snapshot 1, I'm going to potentially have potential energy plus kinetic energy. And in snapshot 2, I'm going to potentially have potential energy plus kinetic energy. And let's just zero out some things that I can zero out. Um, the condition I'm setting here, the kinetic energy in snapshot 2 will be 0 because I'm looking for the minimum speed and all that. Now, uh, momentum in snapshot 1 can still be non-zero. But let me just make things simple for myself. And I'm going to say this height here is y is equal to 0. Uh, uh, is equal to y is equal to 0. That makes the height, uh, the potential energy in this snapshot equal to 0. And for the potential energy in snapshot 2, I can use this height. I think that's 2r, twice the radius of, or twice the length of the rod. So I can write that in. So with that, uh, let's uh, write down the equations. I can say we have kinetic energy in snapshot 1, 1 half total mass times v1 squared is equal to just the potential energy at the top, which will be the total mass times g times the height difference 2L. 
Good. Uh, and let me do some simple simplifications. Masses cancel. So looking at this equation, Roman numeral 2, I see that um, it has a V1 as an unknown, and everything else is known. So it looks like I can use this equation to solve for V1. Let me do that quickly. Solving this for V1. I'm going to just do this in my head for the sake of time. Please double check my math. It's equal to square root of 4GL. Plugging this into that equation, I can, so uh, pulling in information from Roman numeral 1, I can say MV min is equal to the sum of the masses times uh, V1, which is the square root of 4GL. Uh, let me scroll down and write that. Uh, times the square root of 4GL. So I think I can solve for V min here. V min is going to be the ratio of the masses times square root of 4GL. Okay, that took me 10 minutes, I think. Uh, let me try to be a little bit more quick about this. Uh, so I don't run out of time. Uh, 4 times G times L. All right. Uh, yeah, 9 minutes left. All right, I got to be quicker about this. Okay. If the bullet is fired, that means find the work, calculate how much mechanical energy is lost in the collision process, assuming... Uh, all right. Um, so I believe I can use... Um, I believe I can use this, or, yeah, yeah, I believe I can use this to get V1. I, I don't really have to copy and paste this. So, okay, let me write it down this way. So part B, uh, initial kinetic energy is going to be one half mv min squared. That's it. Um, the Kinetic energy in snapshot 1 is going to be 1 half sum of the masses times V1 squared. So I think I can just work this out in a calculator. So let me do that. I can do that in Wolfram Alpha. And let me just copy all these parameters so that I can um, put them in quickly. So kinetic energy um, initial will be 1 half times mass. Um, 60 grams times V mean, which was the ratio of the masses, 60 plus 940 divided by 60 times the square root of 4 times 9.8 meter per second squared times the length 1.2 meters. And because I'm putting in units in tool from alpha, it will also kind of double check my algebra, do all the necessary unit convergence. So with that, we get, uh, wait, I missed something. I forgot to square my speed. Yeah. That's what I mean. It'll <laughs> find my mistakes. Um, yeah, it's in joules, 392 joules. So the second one, the, so the V1 is, um, so one half, the sum of the masses, 60 grams plus uh, 940 grams. And for V1, it's just the 4 times, so I can just get rid of this. Square root of 4GL is V1. And I'm going to square it. Yeah, okay, that looks good. So in that, it's 23.5 joules. Wow, it lost a lot. So the answer here will be energy, energy lost is equal to 392 joule minus 23.5 joule, which is equal to... Um, 3, um, 60, 9.5 joule, I think. Nope, 390, 368.5 joule. Yeah. So, so yeah, that's a lot. Um, see work uh, attached also. Right, I got five minutes, I think. Uh, six minutes, okay. If we keep the other parts of the pendulum the same, but replace the rod, describe the actual path. Oh, yeah. So let me just start by drawing it. So what it will be is that um, the speed that we have simply won't be fast enough um, because uh, with the rod, it could rigidly support. It, it could rigidly support the mass of the thing. With a string, it can no longer do that. 
So because it can no longer do that, um, so basically I think up to around, sorry, up to around here or so, it's probably gonna be fine. But starting from above this point is where the block needs to be moving fast enough so that the tension force here, um, it'll be up greater than zero. And the moment where the tension goes to zero, somewhere around here, is where it won't keep going in circle anymore. So tension goes to slack, and then from there it's basically doing uh, projectile motion with uh, some initial speed. So it'll kind of follow that kind of project uh, motion. So let's say here uh, differs from circular path. Yeah. Uh, so up to the point where. Um, Tension force doesn't go to zero yet because tension force is providing a portion all of the centripetal force. Um, the block follows the circular path. Uh, past that, the tension goes to zero and the block moves like a projectile motion deviating from the circular path. Uh, C drawing attached. So that's it, that's it really the simple point of with the rod, rod could push as well as pull, but with the string it can only pull. Okay, so if we, what minimum speed does the blend need to have? Yeah, so um, let me see if uh, in the interest of time I can kind of um, um, reuse some of the previous work. So let me write D here. So, you know, I sketched all this out. It took a lot of work to do that. And I believe I can use a lot of it. I don't have to reinvent the whole thing all the way from scratch. So let me start from here. And then let's see what revisions we need to make. I think the biggest revision we would need to make is, so remember how we said that at the top that the velocity would go to zero. That is no longer true. At the top, velocity would go to some fixed value, um, um, well, well, fixed value, let me call that just the VF. So we need to figure out what should that VF be. And that's the part that takes a little bit of uh, force analysis you are uh, drawing this free body diagram of the block at the top. It has downward force of mg, and I think that's it. And that mg has to equal mv squared over r, which is L here, uh, because this gravitational force is providing the centripetal force, so it's following the circular path so far. And the tension has gone to zero. If it hadn't gone to zero, you'd have tension here that accommodates higher speeds. So in the scenario where tension has gone to zero, is the minimum V final. So let me solve this for V final. Um, and say V final is uh, masses cancel. It's going to be square root of uh, GL. So that's what this speed is going to be. It's going to be square root of GL instead of being zero. So with that, I need to make all the other modifications. I think my equation one remains the same. Nothing changed here. My equation two now needs to change. Instead of there being zero, oh, am I gonna run out of time? Um, uh, so let me, um, speed means speed at the top is equal to square root of g times L. Um, in case I run out of time doing the rest. So uh, this, instead of being zero, now has to be just regular kinetic energy too, because it's still moving. And it'll be plus one half the total mass times that V final squared, which is GL. Oh, that's nice. So this G2L just changes to uh, G2.5L, because that's what I'll get from adding all this. So, um, what used to be 2 times 2 for 4 becomes 2 times, so uh, 2.5, so this is 5. So uh, V1 becomes square root of 5GL. I think this just becomes square, yeah. So, uh, dot, dot, dot. 
uh, if we mean the new value is the ratio of the masses times square root of 5 times g times l. And I'll double check the answers <laughs> to make sure um, I still work out that. To make sure that my uh, work in a hurry isn't um, wrong. <laughs> right, one minute. That's probably enough time for me to double check. Let's double check. So I um, added this, this new kinetic energy term. Um, so masses still cancel. That part is fine. Multiply through by 2, I get 4GL and GL. Add them, 5GL that I'm going to square root. Yeah, I think that's good. Um, and yeah, this becomes 5GL. Yeah, so I, I think we are all good. So let me add work. I think when it auto submits for me, it won't kick me out of the add work window. Let's test. Gonna start adding work. So let me start with this. Yeah, I think it auto submitted. Must be passed. Oh, not yet. Okay. Uh, let's see. It'll uh, kick me out of the add work window um, when I um, run out of time. By the way, you don't have to add work during the time limit. Uh, my recommendation is you actually take time to, uh, time to yeah, 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 it's letting me continue in the add work thing having without having lost anything. Uh, I recommend that you take the time to organize your work, make it easier, like, you know, this free body diagram, draw it properly somewhere. Don't make it harder for me to follow your work. Uh, and actually, let me do one thing, which, uh, I, or, so if uh, I was organizing, I would erase that uh, A, but I'm gonna leave that on because it's just from my copy and paste job. If you're copying and pasting your own work, uh, you'll see that as a problem during a time limited assessment like this. All right, A, B, and C, I think. Oh, did I skip C? Yeah, I believe I skipped C, so let me make sure I go up and Copy and paste to C. Um, yeah, this was C that I accidentally skipped. All right, so A, B, C, and D that started out as copy of A. Okay, so I think that's good. Save work and continue. And I can review working grade book if I want to see what I submitted as answers and uh, what I uh, attach that work. If you want to change your work, um, this isn't the screen you want to be on. Uh, just refresh this uh, screen, then you will see this add work button. You can add work there. So let's double check to make sure that I got the answer right. <laughs> Let me uh, bring this in, in through my instructor view. And go to the test the student submission. Yep, test the student is the only one who's done it so far. Yeah, you got like the whole spring break to do it if you want to use the spring break. So, okay, so those are my answers. Let's check with answer key. Answer key says, uh, yeah, square root of, like there's four there. So pull it out two times that. Yeah, that's equivalent to my answer. Here, let's see how much energy lost. 368. Uh, did it round? Um, yeah, but I think I rounded wrong. It should have rounded up, right? Well, close enough. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, yeah, this is the picture I was drawing. Yeah. Good. And here it's a square root of. Oh, did, oh, did I have to provide. Yeah, it says give an analytical answer. I don't know why answer key has uh, numbers. Um, so yeah, the ratio of masses times square root of five. Yeah, that's great. Um, that's um, so correct. <laughs> so uh, uh, sorry, I skipped some explanations um, because I was in a hurry. So so that's uh, the uh, ballistic pendulum two, and um, and it's. Uh, I hope uh, you, this feels like a familiar setup to you. You had this in lab. You had a lot of time to think about similar setup. The only real change is that you know in the lab we never fired this fast enough that it actually makes it to the top. Um, but um, that kind of swing up to the top part. I hope it, you can adapt to that uh, from what the work you've done um, for the lab.